Do you fear selling and is it what you think it is? That's what we're going to talk about today on the show. So stay tuned. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Ed Troxel from edtroxel.com, where I make online marketing easy and fun with video. Yes, video, specifically live video, just like you're seeing here. Or if you're tuning in via audio, well, you're missing out on my smiling face and the visuals, but that's okay. You're here and we appreciate it. And today we are gonna have a special guest on the show. So let me set the stage for everyone who's new uh, and maybe you're returning and you just don't know how, how we do these types of episodes. So we are at a digital, well, I should say a virtual coffee shop. And you, the listener, are gonna be eavesdropping in on the conversation that I'm having with my guest, my fellow entrepreneur. Now, if you've never heard this term, why not -er, let me just mention who a why not is. It's you, the business owner, the entrepreneur who's taken the risk to do something different, to make a greater impact. And you can learn more about that on my website. Uh, the link's there, and you can always DM me. Uh, for those who don't know what DM is, direct message. See, I can't help it. I have to teach every step of the way. Uh, so today, you are going to go grab your drink, coffee, whatever you're having. Grab the seat next to ours. A table next to ours and eavesdrop in on our conversation. I'll be monitoring the chat if you're watching us live and you can drop in your comments. Be sure to share this out with fellow entrepreneurs and let's talk about selling and is that what you think it is? I want to know. Share with me. All right, here we go. Cynthia, how's your day going? It's going awesome. Thank you, Ed, for having me here. I'm so excited to be connecting with you as a wine otter. Yes. And let's talk about terms here because you are known as the sales whisperer, which we're just going to start with that because I love how short, sweet, and to the point that is. And tell me, how did that come about? Like, how did you start using that for your uh, business? <laughs> Actually, I didn't. One of my clients came up with it. And I think it's really funny because when I hear that whisper, I always think of Caesar Milan with the dogs. Yeah. Right. So um, my client came up with that because she made the observation that I pick up on things that people don't even know. Right. So I was pointing things out to her and her business where she was missing opportunities that she wasn't even aware of. And that's one of the things that I help my clients do. So the term came up um, I, and it's just kind of been out there. It's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. So, you know what I love about that? And this is what I tell clients and, and anybody I talk to really is really listen to what your audience or in this case, your clients are saying. You know, we go so fast in, in, as an entrepreneur, we go so fast in doing all of the things and getting things checked off that list. But if we pause for a minute and, and just slow down, especially when we're engaging with our audience, we can really tune into the words that they're using and what they're who they're or what words they're referencing in terms of us. And so that's when really things come about. And that's how you can use that in your marketing efforts. So then you're not really trying to figure out all of these technical magical terms that people probably aren't thinking of. You know what? That's a really great point. It, what I know, um, and there's been a lot of years experience backing this up, is that when we're in our heads trying to think about what to say and not listening, we remove ourselves from being available to hear. And that's actually a negotiating strategy as well. And that's why when the FBI is doing negotiating, they have more than one person on the phone. They'll have a key a key person doing negotiating, but they'll have five or six other people listening in because people can't pick up on everything. Yeah. So when we're busy in our heads thinking about things, we actually block ourselves from hearing and that's blocking us from helping our customers because we don't hear what the words they're using. And if we're physically or talking to them, we can hear audio, we're not hearing the tone and everything else that goes into it. So it's a really, really key piece. 
because everything has something behind it. It's so true. And, and yeah. when you're working with your clients, how what sparks their interest to even start working with you? Because sales can be such an interesting, well, term, but also being able to actually do the sales part of things when most entrepreneurs are really trying to stay focused on their zone of genius and not really deal with the sales part, even though we want to make that money. <laughs> you know what? And yeah, <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> um, and that's just it. So how people, I, I talk to, I talk to a lot of people, right? I, I will message them, but then I love getting them on the phones because that's how we can get real conversation going. Yeah. But what sparks our interest is they get to a point where things plateau and then they have to start looking at why they're plateauing. And is it, you know, if their marketing is on point and they're getting their leads coming in, what is it that's happening after that? Because that's where things are falling off or they're, they, maybe they're not getting leads and it's, you know, the words they're using in their, in their marketing. <clears throat> so what gets their attention is the fact that their business is plateauing or they're getting really aware that there's stuff coming up because selling the perception is that you know, it's hard, it's difficult, it's uncomfortable, when really the construct behind it is about having engaging conversations with people and making it easy to do business with you. Everything I do comes from being customer centric and being of service, right? Of course, there's money that comes along with it. But that's never my objective or my focus. It's always, always about just being open to hearing. Now, there's obviously a lot more to it than that. Um, but that's what really gets people. It's like, what am I missing? And usually I'll find entrepreneurs, one of two things will happen. They'll be six months in their business or so, and they're not getting traction. Or they've got traction and they get to about that, you know, they're in the six figures. They get to about that, you know, 250K mark. And then it starts doing that same thing. It starts plateauing because they're still on the phone. They're still doing the sales or the selling, but they don't know how to or don't want to start outsourcing and growing their business. Sure. So that's when I start working with them. So that's, yeah, there's there's a few things that happen with that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's an interesting part there too. Um, so are you working with, both clients who are solopreneurs as well as ones who are ready to outsource and, and get things moving? I actually have a quite diverse portfolio. <laughs> um, so I do work with solo and um, solopreneurs, those just starting out. I have some entry level foundational work. I won't call it entry level because it's still a big leap. So it's foundational work that we do, understanding process and structure and stuff. And then the ones that are ready to start doing some outsourcing, there's some really key things I can do with them. Like I get in, I understand the voice of how they want to sell, how they want their business represented. And then I put that together in a process and, and system for them that they can use when they start onboarding salespeople. And I will actually help them hire salespeople. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, because... Yeah. That's what I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with it is one, you know, that that growth spurt, right? It's it's a struggle to to even though we want it and we we need it, but it's always a struggle uh, for that growth spurt. And then also to outsource, especially for those who are, you know, fairly new in business and just they're doing everything themselves. It, it's it's a challenge to kind of get us to go over that little bump there. <laughs> Well, it's your baby, right? I mean, it's something if you've been nurturing it right from the beginning, bringing on, you know, virtual assistants and operational business managers, things like that, you're still holding on to it, right? Because you're still in control of that. And, you know, the, the philosophy is that nobody can sell better than, you know, the course creator or the owner of it. But that's actually not true because sometimes we're too close to it and we don't see where we're not looking at it objectively. So when you get to a certain level, the first thing I recommend to, pe to people is to maybe start backing away from it. You can stay in all you want, absolutely all you want, but having the right per people allows you to scale just that much faster. That's so true. You know, when we create things, we 
we're the experts, right? Or we like to think that depending on if it's our expertise or not. And and so we get so focused on building out and, and making it what we envision it to be. But we do need those outside perspectives to be able to come in and take that look with a fresh perspective and be able to see what has been created, what's going on here, and to be able to advise us on what could happen next. So then that way we can step back a little bit to see that bigger picture. Yeah, it, exactly. Now, where do you see that coming up as well? Do you see that with the with the people that you're working with as well? Because your business is phenomenal. And I have to give you a shout out because working with you has helped me up my video game. Honestly, people, you just seem to look like before. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that investing right it's like i'm not the expert so let's bring in the expert so thank yeah. you for all of your help but where do you see it yeah i appreciate that so yes i see it the same way especially when it comes to being on camera live um is that so many are not sure what to do in front of the camera uh or what to say uh what to do with the video afterwards uh how they should appear because there's this whole this this whole thing about you have to have this Instagram life perfect lifestyle online. Everything has to be polished. Uh, and so really it, it, again, it's me coming in and helping you step back for a second, removing all those layers uh, of things that you should be doing or are supposed to be doing and all of that and really starting with you. you know I was actually we were talking about this earlier about, the new clubhouse app and i right. actually in uh, a room so they have them they call them rooms and you go in and you just start talking to people and it's quite phenomenal because you get to walk into a room and you don't know who these people are and you get to start talking and engaging and everything else comes later in terms of clicking on their bio, going into the DMs and start messaging with each other. So it's really refreshing. And I was in a room last night and we were talking about live broadcasting, which was awesome. <laughs> and in there, we were talking about, you know, the the ways that, why people don't show up and, and why maybe they're showing up, but they're not seeing a whole lot of traction with it. And again, it's coming in with that new perspective and, and being able to help them see the bigger picture and also understanding that we don't care about the numbers. Like that was one thing that came up. Somebody had said, well, I, you know, I, I'm worried about who's going to show up or who's going to comment because, you know, there's a lot of moving parts when you go live. And I like to squash those right away when I work with my clients is expect no one to show up. Done. Because they don't, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it puts that pressure off. And then if somebody does show up, it's exciting. Yeah. And it's like, oh, somebody's actually watching. Versus, you start at the bottom and you're like, I, I need people to show up. I really, you know. So it's a whole mindset shift, which is what I love being able to start with. And then we work our way to the tech because too many try to go to the tech and. and maybe don't even work backwards. So uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Your process is amazing. Um, and I mean, I'll be, as you know, you and I were talking about that. I actually hired um, a professional makeup artist too, who does have production industry. You know, she's worked professional on set. So she does understand lighting and, and makeup applications and taking care of all of those things are an like using your your system where you start with yourself and and you know graduate to a bigger production are really helpful because i think a lot of people are missing the point that how they show up is actually a reflection of their brand as well right so when you take the extra effort not only do you feel confident and that comes across in your messaging too and how you sell and portray to each other or to portray yourself to other people and that no like and trust factor so they all are entwined like this and i think for people to take the extra step to you know learn about lighting and going live and how their appearance can look and be changed just by lighting things like that it does so much for how they show up 
You don't dread it anymore. It's like, you know what? No, I, I know I can just walk in and I'm going to look okay. Yeah, exactly. And that's the cool thing about it, you know, is just being able to show up as you and, and understand that this, you don't have to be picture perfect on Instagram and have the right layouts and everything no. and, and worry about that stress. Like that is not me by any means. <laughs> That's why I love live broadcasting. Right? Yeah. I, and the more you do it, the easier it gets, right? But when you take care of those base things, then you are comfortable enough to, like, you feel good. You're not stressing about it. So it's, it's, it's like that not being able to focus on what people are saying because you're distracted, right? Yeah. If I show up and I'm not feeling 100%, then I'm going to be even though I'm listening, I'm still going to have that in the back of my mind. So I always, you know, encourage people, if you're going to do something, go all in. It's not about you. It's about what you're, the people that you're talking to. Yes. And, and, and that's such a great point too. So when it comes to selling, because I know we all get in our heads and we overthink things and, and we're really playing that, that imposter syndrome. What, what's something that you like to help people understand when it comes to selling because there is that fear uh, of selling even if it's their their best product or service that they want to offer yeah and that's a <laughs> that's a great question i come from a place of curiosity you know i've done strength tests and things like that not strength like lifting um but like you know my characteristic strengths my number one strength though is learner i love learning but from a very early age i because i started selling when i was 13 no kidding. Honest to God, 13. My first sales job was cold calling for carpet cleaning appointments. Oh, that's awesome. Straight into the fire. Straight into the fire. You want to sell? Here you go. Um, so, you know, it's always been about understanding and what's what the other person on the other end has to say. And maybe that's just a part of how I was brought up, right? It's always about the other person. It's never about me. So the number one thing that I've taught people um, is that take yourself out of the equation. Yeah. It's not about you, right? And show up and have a conversation all about them until it gets to that point where, you know, it's, it's, it's then you need to start talking about your solution. Yeah. And then there's a structure you can follow. So when you show up at a curiosity and wanting to learn, and then you combine it with a structure, that's a path right there. But so many people are showing up and they don't have a structure and they come more worried about what they're going to say. Honestly, who cares what you say? And I know that sounds really weird coming from a sales trainer. Yeah. I, I get that. that. But people only hear what they want to hear anyhow. So as long as you, Here's an example. If you are interested in learning how to sell, I'm going to hear the words you're saying around selling, fear, um, uncomfortable. I'm going to talk about those things because I've heard what you said. Yeah. Right? And then I'm going to talk about those. I know my product well enough that I can then talk about how my product is going to help you with those things. Right. So it's just understanding how that flow works. Yeah. And that's so powerful because, you know, with the online space, it's so easy to create stuff. Not not saying, you know, people who don't know how to create an online course, it's going to be easy for them to create an online course. I mean, it can be, but, you know, right. it's, it's fairly easy to take an idea these days and actually bring it to life. Yes. And, and with that comes some challenges, right? Because we can create all these things, but we have to remember that we have to market them. Yes. We have to market them effectively. <laughs> and we have to sell them. Uh, so it, it's it's great that we're able to create all this stuff, but I don't know, in, in my case, less is more. And, and seeing that these days, I feel like less is more. I don't know. What is your take on that? 
No, I agree. And I'm going to, if I can elaborate a little bit on that, why I think less is more um, is because people want a different experience. Like, and if you think about it, besides 2020 being like an absolute dumpster fire, we all know this, right? We're just going to put it out there. Wow. Is that people have spent the last eight months behind their screens, nine, 10 months. I don't know. Is it still even 2020? I have no idea. Um, but you know what? So we've spent a lot of time looking around, doing things. At first, you know, as earlier in the in the year, we were buying things like crazy. We were looking around, we we're getting, you know, into things. But now we're like, well, wait a minute. I don't want something that's cookie cutter. I want to be able to be engaged. I want to actually create something. So trends, these are something that I see coming, right? For now and for the next year, I think, because things are not going to change. And I see this being really becoming more and more important, giving people a different experience. Yeah. So creating the courses, but giving people opportunity to interact with you as well. Yes. Right? So here's my course, but I'm going to come on. We're going to have a live Q&A or giving them some access. Maybe it's a it's an app access. So like through Vox or Slack or something like that. And then creating a collaborative interaction with them or outcome for them. Yes. Right? Ah, oh, that's yeah. something that I, I, I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah. And, but people need to be aware of that because what you're saying is like, you know, you got your marketing, you got all this. That needs to be incorporated into your marketing as well. And I will be honest, my marketing sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to get coaching on that. Yeah. We all do when it's our own stuff. I mean, I have no problem working with my clients and helping them with their marketing. When it comes to my own stuff, it's again, it's the same thing. We're too close and, and we get too technical and we overthink things. And yes. it's no longer simple, you know. But when it's a client, it's so much easier because we're not the center there. Yeah, well, that goes back to like the selling thing where people, you know, those six, seven figure, eight figure entrepreneurs, I'm hoping at eight figures, they've got that figured out, but they need to, you know, they need to start backing out of the process. Yeah. Too close. Yeah. And I love that you're seeing that trend happen because that's what I've done with my coaches go live program is that it's a hybrid model. I have built it so that it's easy for anyone to implement with as least with the least amount of information overwhelm as possible right as well as having me walk you through those steps not only with the the videos but actually having me available to work with you on the actual program because that's what i wanted when i was figuring all this stuff out and that's what i know people need and so having me be part of that program and walk with them through their journey. Yes. So rewarding for myself, but especially for them. And so I'm glad that you're seeing that trend slowly come up because absolutely. I'm right. It's, there. <laughs> and it's fun. It makes our our job as trainers and coaches, it makes it really fun. Because that's the rewarding part. Like when I have people making breakthroughs and they get that, I really, really get it. Yes. I mean, that's what lights me up, right? And I see people who were afraid, you know, um, I'm thinking of one lady in particular, you know, she was deathly afraid to reach out to people and she had a phenomenal program. And after working together for a few weeks, well, she was closing $3,000 programs, like no problem. One week, $21,000 to sales. I'm like, like that's, that's what it is about, right? And it's the confidence I see coming out in people. Yeah. But you know, you said something really key there too. It's about in the, giving them the information in the least amount possible. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, like I say, I've been doing this for a really long time, 41 years. Let's just get that out there. Um, but when you have a lot of experience, right, it's really easy to flood people and overwhelm them with information. Yeah. But even when we're talking to clients, it's really easy to do that, right? When we're having sales conversations, we just went bleh, right? But again, it's never about us. Um, so just stripping it down and giving them the actionable steps. If you want to give them, and tell me if yours is the same way. If you, if they want the technical part, I can give that to them. Sure. Right? But I'm going to give them the actionable steps and then support them through how to implement that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because here's the thing. What I mean, one of my businesses before 
uh, back a few years ago was literally building an online course platform because I wanted bite-sized pieces of information. I saw that the course industry was just being overwhelmed with too much fluff and too many extras that still they all sound great in theory, but nobody is going to actually get through all of that. And if they do, they're not actually going to implement. So it's like they those it's pointless. And so for me, I've always been, what is that bite-sized piece of information that can get you what you need and that you can actually implement right away to get that win. And so that's all I've always been. And so with this program, that's what I've done. And, yeah. and as you move forward with things, you can always fine tune, you can always start trimming things here and there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that you just don't want to put, put everything out at once. Like the first brain dump, you don't want to throw that out and put that into a course or something because oh, I have <laughs> it's overwhelming, right? They're crying on the other end. I'm like, no, it'll be okay. Yeah. Not really. Okay, maybe. <laughs> and that's the thing too. What What's a great point? And we'll, I'll backtrack on this too for a second because that's a great point because when we don't know, we will do that. And that is okay because then that, that is considered a beta. A beta, absolutely. Always, always, always. And that's where we can learn what people are interested in, what they really need, how much they're willing to pay for this, what they think the value is, like all of these different things. Yes. And even educating them though, on what the value of it is, right? Because I do a lot of work with people, a lot of conversations prior to them, you know, maybe, um, not so much joining the programs, but if I'm working with them, you know, when they get to that level about what their expectations are and what that price represents to them, right? Because, you know, around sales, it can have such a direct implication on the revenue stream, right? And reducing margin, because that's another point that I also think of, right? And Or yeah, re increasing margin, reducing overhead and costs, right? Yeah. So having those conversations about what it's going to mean to their business rather than what they are, think it's worth paying because they don't really understand the results yeah. and what that's going to mean physically, mentally, all of that. I think that's on us as course creators and as trainers and coaches. It's up to us to help people it, it start understanding what that's going to mean in their life. Yes. Right. And to their business. Yes, it is so true. And, and and it can be challenging. You know, I know a lot of times, again, if if you're the one working on everything, it's very challenging to see that. You know, I know for me, when I was building out Coaches Go Live, I was focused on talking about the, the process and really just like, these are the modules that I can really help people with. But then as I stepped back and I brought in support, I can see that it's so much more than just going live. It's understanding who you are. It's going through that mindset. It's also finding that time. Like there's a time audit that I do with my clients. And for me, I just like doing that just in general. But what I've found is that my clients are so appreciative of that because now they're actually finding extra time that they didn't think they had to be able to do this and and it shows you know that they can do not only the live but other things that may fill that time space too so it's that freedom part and being able to be empowered with the technology and yeah. knowing that they can too do this whether yeah. it's live cool. or just being able to go on social and understand some of the tech and stuff so it's all of those things that surround the actual program. Oh, because it's so overwhelming. Now you said something in there that I just want to expand on a little bit. And you said who you are or who they are. I'm going to say this is one of the things that I've seen a lot too when it comes to selling and where there's a lot of misalignment. One of the reasons why people are getting stumped is they're trying to sell in a way that doesn't align with who they are because they don't know, right? It, it, it's true because we... Here's what happens with selling. Unless you've got some reason to go out and learn about selling, people will binge watch videos or they'll pick up some books and things like that. 
but they don't know all the nuances in putting it together. So they end up piecemealing the system that feels really uncomfortable. They're saying things that don't resonate with who they are. And as a result, they're ending up exhausted. They're frustrated, right? And it's like, actually, it can be really easy and way better for that. If you're an introvert and you don't like to talk a lot, there's ways around that, right? And that's why just shutting up and listening is really good for people who are introverted. Because to be honest, I'm extremely introverted. You wouldn't know, right? But I've also done improv too, which is kind of counterintuitive, but I need like, okay, so I can be on during the day and speak for hours and hours. But at the end of the day, I just like completely shut down and recharge. That's what I need to do. Yeah. But I know how to structure my day and sell according to my energy cycles as well. So without getting too into it there, but definitely understanding how it affects you yeah. and making sure you're selling in a way that, that, that respects who you are right and and that's i love that you brought that up too because you know i definitely have an introvert side to me like not so much on live yeah (laughs) live now because i've worked on it for five plus years now but it's i'm still have that um and what's interesting is that so many people who do fear the camera and who do fear being live are just thinking, again, you have to be on camera. But when you have someone like me come in to show you the bigger picture, and we work on whether or not you can get in front of the camera, whether it's now or maybe sometime in the future after some exercises, uh, there are ways to go live with just your voice. And still, oh, yes, yes, yes. And still right. get that love from the platform as yes. as still have that presence online so again it's these small tweaks that make a huge difference and huge i really encourage people to think outside the box and to be open to that and then also to use the digital space with networking calls on zoom or like i mentioned the new clubhouse app if somebody's in there use those places to test your verbiage to test what you're saying, because what you aren't sure about, you have these opportunities to just talk and get comfortable and have one-on-ones with people, like have a connection call with somebody just to connect with them to see who they are and what they do, and then listen to what you're saying, also listen to what they're saying and what their response is, and doing this helps so much, and it helps us stop overthinking. It also is really good conversation skills. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go back to basics. My parents taught me, you know, if someone else is talking, shut up and let them talk, right? <clears throat> that was it. We would get a wrap across the hand. If it's like, shut up, your dad is talking. It's like, okay, <laughs> right? That's just the way it was, right? Um, you know, something that's come up that I am starting to do as well, because you talked about the audio, is that a, that's a component I'm actually adding to my programs. So people can show up and watch the videos, but I'm adding a podcast portion, like a pop-up podcast for the lessons so that people can have it in their ears on their own. They can go to their favorite podcast, you know, broadcasting platform and it's there, right? So they can take it with them, but it also helps reinforce because they're getting the information then from more than one way. Yeah. Um, Because some of us are very visual. Some of us are, you know, auditory, kinetic, whatever. And so the more we can immerse ourselves, again, it goes back to that that engaged experience for people too. It's immersive. It feels good. It feels it feels next level. Yes. Right. And that really helps people if you're listening, which you I know you are, it helps set yourself apart as a provider, a service provider. Do the extra things that set yourself apart. Yes. Exactly. And and that's why I got started in live. Like yeah. that was the whole reason. I knew when I quit my job at Apple that I was going to have to market myself differently online. Absolutely. And how I was going to do that, I was trying to think of these different ways. And bam, that's when live streaming came out. And I thought, well, I'm the guy behind the camera. I'm not the I'm one. In. <laughs> but I am going to have to force myself because if I don't, 
my business won't survive. And I literally had that talk with myself in my backyard. And it was literally that it was, I will not survive. Like there's just not an op option. So I have to get good at this. I have a friend who's, who's, uh, she's tremendously successful. Like she, I think she is sure she's getting close to, you know, the half million mark. She went live every day for 90 days. Yes. Right. And you know what? Okay. So here's a good story. I don't know if you know this. Do you know who Russell Brunson is? He's the founder mm -hmm. of the Funnels. You know, there's Russell's in his own world, right? And I got my own opinion on that. Um, but he started a podcast. And I think for the first, I don't know, 23 li three episodes, nobody listened. Nobody listened. And his first 100 episodes, but he went live every single day. And then after his like his hundred or so episode, then he started getting decent and people started listening. But it was that discipline just to do it every single day, which is, you know, going live gets so much easier. Oh, yeah. And the best way to do that, though, is by engaging with people like you're saying. If you got a chance to, you know, to get somebody on a Zoom call do it because the emotional attachment you have with people i'm going to say this as a sales thing too it's so much easier to do business with someone that you've talked to and you've seen their face it's also harder to say no yes so true <laughs> it's really easy to disappear in messenger and like just be ghosted but when you've connected with somebody and you've really heard them you are miles ahead of people who are just doing things, you know, through email and stuff like that because you get that real time, right? Yeah, no, so, it's cool. It's so true. Oh, I, I could hang out and talk with you all day. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, this is such a good conversation. <laughs> and so tell me, what are, what are you working on right now? Because I know you you have some things in the works here. Yeah. So um, the big thing that I'm doing right now this year, I've um, I've done some changing too. I've started because I've been working in corporate. I still do work. I still have some corporate affiliations, right? Yeah. That I do, and I actually oversee like 15 international resellers for um, a certain technology company, right? So I also have a tech background, which is something that I I like with where you're coming from there. Um, so I have my foundational sales training course. My group is called Fearless Selling. That's with a dash of fearless. The whole reason is because I want people to fear, have less fear around selling. Wow. Not to go out there and be brazen and fearless because that can be reckless, but fear the process less. So I have a foundational course that I do. And then I am creating a new service, which is where I'm going to be helping those entrepreneurs who are, you know, at that six, seven figure mark and need to start outsourcing their sales and building out teams. Right now I'm doing that just one on one. And I'm going to continue doing that probably for a little while yet yeah. until I can build up a really rock solid program that people can do. I don't want people at that level, though, doing it as a self-study. I want them outsourcing it, right? So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ironing that out. But, you know, and then I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Yeah. So for people who are stuck and they are, you know, wanting to get, even if they're, you know, in their five figures, things like that, they need to get some some skills and structure. That's where I'm spending my time. It's super exciting because, like I say, I'm introducing new technology to make it better for people. And it, again, it's just that lighting up I see with people when they start really, you know, they go from closing 50% of their conversations to all of a sudden they're 70, 80, 90% of their conversations, right? Or their consultations. Because I do that, I start from everything from the initial consultation the initial contact right till the time someone buys or doesn't buy that entire process. So yeah, that, things planned for this year. Yeah, that that's amazing. And, and, and that's the beauty of it is being able to be able to be flexible and, and to build those out and to give your clients what they need and, and be able to help them break through that fear and, and and see that other side and to open doors to things that they never even might have thought of. I mean, that's that's why I love live broadcasting and why I say 
after you go live, there's what's called the live effects. It's because you don't know what's going to happen once that video is posted. It can lead to so many doors of possibilities from from sales to speaking to the biggest connections you have. Absolutely. You know, like Absolutely. all of those things. And so it, it's just amazing. But again, you have to show up, you have to deliver your information and you have to engage because if you don't engage, nothing can come from that. Can I just say, and it's exponential too. Like you do, you, you go along, you go along and then you get some little engagement. Then all of a sudden one day you've got like double the engagement and then it just, it extrapolates from there, right? It's like, it's exponential. It's just like, oh my God, right? Like it's, it's crazy how quickly it can go. It feels very slow, but it can go really, really quickly. Do I have one second just to qualify something that I'm Please. saying? Because I'm talking about this stuff, but people be like, well, who is she to talk about all this stuff? Yeah. Uh, right? So just a, a quick bit of background. So we know I started selling when I was 13. Um, I have worked with some of the biggest companies out there and sold for them and trained for them. So that's Coca-Cola, Remax. I've sold on behalf of and trained on behalf of for Grant Cardone, who's like one of the biggest sales trainers out there. Um, I've done hundreds of millions of dollars of sales in my life because I've been doing it all of my life. Yeah. Um, tangibles, intangibles. And I'm certified in four different selling techniques, master certified in two. But what I really, really love about all that is that I've been able to see where the gaps are missing in the training that's conventionally out there. Yeah. And take it specifically, make it applicable to the online world. Yes. Right? Because there's a difference between how people are doing business online and how when you're going to a store and wanting to sell. The experience is different. Right. So, yeah. And it's the negotiating and it's objections and all of these different things. Right. Because I've also worked in corporate. I've been exposed to every single part of selling, working with operations, understanding the financial implications and things like that. So I'm able to draw on that 40 years of experience and bring it all online. So if anybody was wondering, that's that's a little bit about me. And I continue to do it because I love it. I, I literally say, love it. Yeah, I was going to say, the fact that you've been doing it for this many years and you still light up and you still are happy. No, it's crazy, right? I'm like, that, that's the beauty of it. It's like, okay, yes, this is your zone of genius and this is what you are meant to do. <laughs> As compared to passions, right? Because I actually, for a little while, did some health coaching because that's another passion of mine, which I love, but it wasn't the zone of genius as you were talking about, right? And so understanding that is a really key thing as well, is it's okay to have the passions and do that, but does it light you up for the long term? Right? And it doesn't necessarily have to, but know how to position it in your business so that you can still feel the way you want to, right? Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia, for being here and for thank hanging out with me. It was a pleasure, and I look forward to our next coffee chat. Thank you so much, Ed. It's, and it's actually just really good to see you again. It's been a while since we connected, so thank yeah. you. Of course, of course. We'll catch up soon, okay? Okay, yeah, you take care. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, everyone, for uh, tuning in, and as you see, Everything just happens. It's fun. Uh, thanks for tuning into this episode. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and be sure to check the show notes, the description for a links to connect with Cynthia, as well as my site. If you need any help being pointed in the right direction, I like to help you navigate these online streets uh, a little bit easier and, and more effective for you. And if you need anything, just reach out and we look forward to seeing you next time. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Take care and enjoy.